Have you ever wondered how tattoo artists design your tattoo digitally? Stay tuned to find out. Hi guys, I'm Hayley Tattooer and this is Tattoo Talk. For those new to my channel, I talk about anything tattoo related from a client perspective, what to expect. So if you're into that, please like and subscribe. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my process, not necessarily every tattoo artist process, but definitely my process for designing black and gray realism tattoos digitally. Now, why do I use the iPad and not just a pen and pencil? Well, I did do that during the start of my apprenticeship and probably the first half of my career so far. But when digital options came on the market, I was very, very quick to move over to the iPad. There are some tattoo artists that prefer to stay with pen and pencil and tracing paper, and that is fine, it's very organic. But for me, with black and gray realism, I use a lot of reference material. The tattoos are very big and detailed and I need to be able to make changes really quickly when the client arrives to their appointment. So the main reasons for me were, firstly, I saved a ton of paper and I mean a ton. I probably reduced my paper usage by at least 20 to one. So that was amazing. And the other thing is my clients come in and I do like to have them involved in the design process a little bit. So we usually do a consult, I get all the details from them or they email them through or we just have a chat in their previous appointment and I get an idea, I come up with the idea and then on the day, they will come in and I'll show them what I've got. If they want changes made, I'll do it then and there because it's super quick. Another reason that I like to use the iPad is that it keeps everything together. I've got my diary, my full schedule, access to my emails, which is my main way that I operate, and all of the notes that I've taken and all of the previous drawings and everything that I've done are all in one place. So as opposed to when everything was paper, you would be sorting through tons of paper, trying to find the notes that you took when you had a consultation with your client three months ago. So for me, having an iPad just really streamlines everything. So the iPad that I use is the 12.9 inch third generation iPad Pro. It must be an iPad Pro because it has a different screen pickup. It's got a much more sensitive screen pickup and it works with the Apple Generation 2 pen. Now, I love the Generation 2 pen because it charges magnetically, whereas the previous Generation 1 pen had a cap on the end that then inserted into the iPad to charge, and it was, everybody lost their cap, and it was a quite risky to bend the pen while it was sitting in, in the bottom port charging. So having a case that just sits nicely in flush with the iPad itself and it charges that way. So very, very easy, a lot easier to use than the generation one pen. The reason that I use the 12.9 inch screen is that I design really, really large tattoos and I like to be able to see as much of the tattoo as possible while I'm designing it. So they do have a smaller iPad Pro. That would be fine if you're designing little pieces, but for me, the 12.9 inch works fantastically. For anyone interested in learning illustration or digital art, that kind of thing, I highly recommend the iPad Pro and the Gen 2 pencil. It's an amazing, incredible tool. There is no lag when you're drawing. I'll pop a link in the description below if you wanna take a look. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so I like to use the app Procreate for all of my drawings. I use other apps for font and I use another app for symmetry, but 98% of the work that I do is on Procreate. So highly, highly recommend. There are others called Sketchbook Pro and um, that kind of thing, but I feel for tattoo artists, Procreate is the go-to. So for today, I'm going to just do a, like a really quick example of how I put together a tattoo for one of my clients. So for example, if they wanted an upper half sleeve, of a lion with a crown and some flowers. So let's get into it. So first of all, I'll open Procreate. We'll pop over here and just change the color to red. I always use the technical pen. It's just really handy. Um, and we wanna draw kind of like an outline of the space that we're using. So it would be like an upper half sleeve. And if it's a left or right sleeve, I'm gonna say that it's a left sleeve, which means this is the front, okay? We've got a little bit of a bicep area there, a little bit of a tricep area here. 
So lions, we need to find a reference. In realism, you really need to use reference material. If you are that talented of an artist that you can draw these things without a reference, that is incredible. I hope you have a lot of time to do that. But with us, we have a different client every day and we need to do this in the most practical way. So we go onto the internet and we find reference material. So I just like to go into Google Images and we will have a look for a lion first. Okay, so we've got a few lions here. I really like this guy. It's very contrasty. It's a nice high def definition photo. So we're just gonna copy that. Go back to Procreate. Paste it in there, size it up to the size that we want it. And then I do everything in black and gray. I do some color, but I like to do everything in black and gray. So I'm gonna take the saturation down. I'm gonna take out the background. So I'm just using the erase brush there. And I like to use a big soft brush for the erase. And we'll leave some of that background in, okay? Now I'll move him down because we do need a little bit of room for the crown. Pop back over to Google and we're gonna look for a king crown. This one looks good. So we'll copy that. Pop it back over, paste it in there. It's upside down. Okay. So I'll make it a roughly this, the right size. I like to take the saturation out and then erase the background a little. Now we want it sitting on the lion's, oops, on the lion's head. So we're gonna take that little bit of the crown out there. Okay, and now we can kind of see where it is. So we can adjust the size and placement. Now, if it were sitting on his head, there'd be a little bit of shadow there. So we're going to add in a new layer. So we do the everything on a different layer so that we can manipulate it bit by bit until it is perfect. And this is probably where you get the maximum effect, I think, of the iPad is that you can tweak things until it's perfect. Whereas when we did things with paper, it was so hard to tweak things that we just got it good enough and then got the line work prepared. But this allows us to have a lot more precision and flexibility in the design. So I'm gonna pop in another layer on top of the lion, but under the crown, we'll choose black, pop over here to an airbrush and we'll just pop in a little, just a little shadow under there. And we might go back to the crown erase a little bit of the crown because maybe his fur texture would be sort of sitting in front of the crown a little bit there. Cool. Okay, so that's that bit done. Um, now our imaginary client wanted some flowers. Roses are pretty popular, so we might pop over and have a look at some roses. I feel like at this point, I've probably used every single rose reference on the internet. So we'll try and find one that I haven't used before. This one looks good. So we'll copy that, pop back over here, paste it in. Usually it pastes on the top layer, sometimes it doesn't. So take that saturation out. Now we've taken the saturation out of that rose and it looks a little bit flat. So what I'm gonna do is play with the curves and just pull basically the, the contrast, pull the darks darker and we wanna pull the lights up a little bit lighter. We're gonna have a dark background so it doesn't matter if the roses are a bit light. I like using light, light roses. So we erase that background just like we did with the others. Okay, and then we'll pull it down and put it where we like. 
Okay. So I don't want to create like a totem pole of images. So we'll, we'll want to create a little bit of flow. So we're going to pop this one here. We're going to go back to our search, have a look for another rose, a smaller one this time. Okay, let's go with this one. We can shrink it down, make it a bit smaller than the other one. So I'm going to paste that one in, do the same thing that I did with the other. I tend to go from using the pen to my actual hands um, between. I always draw with the pen, but sometimes I just switch between. I don't know why, no particular reason. Multitasking. Okay. So we don't need it to be perfect because we're not printing this image onto the client's skin. We're just using this as a composition tool, okay? And um, we also, I also tend to make a lot of changes to, not a lot of the changes, a little bit of change to the design as I'm actually applying it. So sometimes there might be, there might need to be shadows where there aren't shadows in the composition piece. So you just go through and add them as you're going. Uh, and that's where the artistic element comes into it. So a lot of people will argue that this is just, this is tracing, um, but it's, it's really composition based. And like I said, we do a lot of alterations during the actual tattoo. We apply a lot of art theory while we're applying it. This is just to give us a lot of the proportions and give us a nice, quick, easy to prepare reference image to use. Now, I, because those roses are light, we're gonna pop them on a dark background. So we'll go back to this layer with the big soft brush and we're just gonna brush in a nice dark layer down there. I might even come up here a little bit, All right? And now we wanna use, we wanna put some leaves in. Now I'm gonna just use this soft brush, make it a little bit smaller. Now I like to create flow through the piece. So what I mean by flow is if this is going to be, let's just make it red for a little bit. If this is going to be on a left upper half, upper half sleeve, you've got the deltoid area here, the tricep area here, you've got the elbow down here and the inner elbow here. So the, the body has kind of like a nice flow that you really want to follow. Something that looks nice on paper isn't just going to automatically sit nicely on a body. When, you're, when we are preparing, when I am preparing a, a black and grey realism tattoo for a client, I always keep in mind the body part. I won't draw anything up unless I know where it's going. Okay, so we'll make that white again. And I just want to pen in a couple of little leaves. So what I was talking about with the flow, you can use leaves, they're very organic to create that kind of a flow. So we might put some kind of like out there. I really should have my glasses on. And create a little bit of a flow. Yeah, okay, so you can see that they go down on the angle from the top to the bottom following the tricep area. Now over here, we've got a really dark area. Um, we don't want um, just like big areas of nothing in the tattoo. So we might add some flow lines. I like to add flow lines into a tattoo. They're kind of like just wispy, breezy little bits of wind, you might call them. Um, and they just add another texture or element to show that flow. It just stops it from looking like a bit of a sticker. So we're just gonna come up here and create a couple of little wind strokes. And we might do another one up here and sort of follow that, that same pattern, that same flow. So you can sort of see what I'm doing there. I feel a little bit like Bob Ross at the moment, <laughs> except way less cool. All right, so 
take a little bit off the top of this just so it looks neat. Get rid of that. So there you have it, uh, upper half sleeve of a lion and with a crown and some roses. Uh, now what we would do just a bit as a bit of an afterthought is obviously we need to put a stencil on the client's body. Now there are ways that we could just print this picture out and stencil it as it is, but I find that those techniques of stenciling are not foolproof. So what I like to do is block out a map for myself, not so much an outline. It does look like an outline when I've blocked it out, but it is actually just a map for where I'm going to put the shading because in black and gray realism, there are no outlines. So I'll quickly show you a little bit of what that might look like. And yeah, that'll be it. So I like to put a opaque layer oops, in between it so I can adjust how much of it I can see. And then I can see the pen easier on the top. So for example, if I'm gonna go through here, just map out the areas of black, a little bit of shading. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because like I said, I'm going to be using my artistic practice to go in and put all the details in. I'll have this reference material sitting right beside me while I'm tattooing and I can just look at the design and know what values to put in there and put the shading. So this is basically just making sure that the proportions are correct when I put the stencil on the body so that when the tattoo is finished, it looks beautiful and in proportion and close to the reference product. For me, I like to use multiple images putting my designs together because I believe that taking a photo straight off the internet and using it exactly as it is without any changes is kind of poor workmanship unless that's exactly what the client wants. Like if they just want a big eagle and you have a perfect eagle reference, of course, you're going to just be using one reference. But a lot of the time clients want to put a little bit of something unique and personalized in their tattoo. And by adding things like the crown and the flowers and even having your clients choose significant um, you know, items or images, that kind of thing to put in their tattoo, it really makes a difference. So if you can sort of see there, I've done a little bit of the lion's face. I'm just gonna show myself where the dark shades are going and then we can use this layer. And we can turn that layer all the way up and you can see the leftover product, which is this outlining. And then we take those lines and put it straight through our thermal copier, which then transfers it uh, the carbon of this design onto stencil paper, which we then put straight onto the skin. So you can see how that would be significantly easier than printing out lots of different reference material, putting them in the photocopier, taking them up 10%, realizing that they need to go up 20%, taking them up 20%, ending up with 50 pieces of paper, scissors, sticky tape, that kind of thing, and then still having to size it appropriately to the client's arms. And another thing that you can do also is take a photo, or that we can do as an artist, is take a photo of the area on the body that the client is getting the tattoo, and then we can draw it exactly to fit their body, because each body is different, and sometimes we also need to work in between existing tattoos. So that's a really, really good tool for that as well. So as you can imagine, this app is super fun to use. I really enjoy it. I still use Procreate on my spare time and my kids use it, that kind of thing. So it's really a good tool for anybody to have. If you're looking at getting into tattooing, it's pretty much required. Also, if you're not looking into becoming a tattoo artist, but you want to design large scale tattoos maybe for yourself, this is a fantastic tool to use. Your tattoo artist will still refine your ideas. Like at the, at the end of the day, it's their job to make it look spectacular and they are the artists. They're going to do something that works really well for your body and for them with their knowledge, but you can always use this tool to put things together so that you can get an idea of what it might look like before you take the next step and contact your tattoo artist. So what did you think? Did you like seeing the design process, the behind the scenes of how we design tattoos digitally? Leave a comment in the 
comments below and don't forget to head over to my Instagram Haley Tattooer to see some of the work that I do and some of the things that I like and please like and subscribe. Thank you.